um, show you the different services that is, that is available on the cloud. So right now, um, <clears throat> we'll we'll take a look at the traditional model, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a few stacks, which probably gonna make sense to you because you've already seen a lot of stuff. So let's say we have, you know, I mean, traditionally what do we have? We have to, you know, we have to get the land. We have to get, you know, the power supply. We have to get, uh, you know, the chilling plants, the cooling system, right? So these are the bigger ones. And then the security, and you know, the physical security, all those retina scan, finger scan, and, you know, voice uh, secure authorization, etc. So, so that's what uh, you're going to have to uh, do. So I'm just going to put a one color uh, just so, that, you know, the, because this is uh, this color right now, the sky blue is our responsibility as a company, as a person or as anything you can think of. OK, the next thing, once we have it, once we have the data center basically set up, the next, uh, you know, we're going to have racks. Server and racks, right? So you're going to have a lot of servers, you're going to have a lot of racks. And within that, uh, on, on top of servers, we're going to put uh, something called hypervisor. Right? So the, 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 this is the type two hypervisor. I mean, there are so many different hypervisors uh, out there. And uh, the most famous hypervisor, I mean, the leader in the hypervisor is, you know, you probably, you know, you should, uh, you should be aware by now because I've talked about this so many times during the, uh, initial lectures of the Linux when we talked when we were talking about the IT infrastructure. So it is ESXi, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this is by the VMware and ESXi is the leader and ESXi is the type one hypervisor, which is used in the data center. Type two hypervisors we use in our house, uh, I mean, for our education purposes, like VirtualBox, VMware Workstation, VMware Fusion for the Mac, Parallels, uh, and all those things. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also going to do some honorable mentions about you know, this is just uh, for the benefit of the video. So when you watch the video again, probably this, you know, you can recall it by this. And these are important, good to know information. Mm -hmm. So we have a Zen server. So AWS used to have uh, a hyper, AWS using Zen server, but they now migrated, mm -hmm. they're migrating. And I think they have the uh, both Zen server and the KVM server. Uh, Zen and the K KVM is not a server, I mean, it's a Zen. It's a hypervisor technology. And uh, so let me just make this a little smaller and just move them every, you know, all of them closer. And then, you know, you can't, uh, you have to mention Microsoft everywhere. And so Microsoft has their own hypervisor, hypervisor as well, which is called Hyper. So you put a hypervisor, this hypervisor will give you a special ability of splitting your hard, physical hardware into virtual hardware. So by doing so, we're going to end up having something like this, which is, let me just copy. So our hardware now has been broken into two. Right. So this will be our virtualized hard hardware. And this will also be the same thing. Okay. Now, on, on top of hardware, we're going to put something called a guest OS. Now, you want to, you may want to remember the name because this is what is going to be used on the cloud, right? So you have a guest OS and uh, because that's, that's how you do that, right? And on the cloud also the same thing. And on top of guest OS, you're going to put your runtime or middleware. You know, this is basically your application. So like if you're writing a Java application, then your runtime is going to be the Java, JRE. If you're writing a Python application, then your runtime is going to be Python. And similarly, Node Go. So you need them. If I ask you to go and write some code in the .NET, or, you know, if I, you first thing you're going to have to do is to download it, right? If I tell you to write in .NET or in PHP or whatever programming language, you're going to have to download the runtime. You're going to have to make sure that all the libraries are there with you, all the modules or functions or whatever you need. So those are your middleware, right? The configuration, sometimes you're going to have to tweak as well. So that's, that's part of your runtime and middleware. And then the next thing uh, we will have is the uh, scaling capabilities. So we will have 
scaling. Now, you don't normally do that for your development environment, but remember, we're not talking about your development environment, right? Your playground. This is the production environment. And every time you go to production, you want to have some kind of a scaling capabilities, right? So we'll see that. And there's a good reason why I'm mentioning it here because you'll see the cloud different services, um, you know, they they all have the scaling mm -hmm. capabilities. And then you have your application. And finally, on top of that, you're gonna have your data, right? So you create any application, uh, that application, like you just create a simple form and you're gonna have to fill that form, right? So somebody is gonna provide the data. So, you know, that's your data. You use Google, uh, Gmail, uh, Gmail, and in order to use the Gmail, you provide a lot of data, right? So that application is there. And, you know, it's one of the kind, one of the cloud type services. We'll talk about that because now we are getting there. Uh, but you still provide the data. So data is something always that, you know, will be provided, uh, will be provided by us, you know, regardless of what the cloud is doing. So you'll see, and every single the, the different type, all the different types of services that we will be using, we will, uh, you know, it's going to be us uh, who will be, uh, you know, supplying the data all the time. So this is your traditional on-prem, right? So let's just say, just keep it that way. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. And now we introduce the first type of the cloud okay before i introduce first type of the cloud there is another thing that is in my opinion again a very important thing uh, for you guys to know and so let me just go ahead and give it a different color okay something is too dark okay let's give it this color so okay i may have i mean i should have done a rack as well because okay now we have a colo which is very famous colo data centers or colo facilities which is a co-location data centers and these are very popular nowadays i mean ever with the advent of the cloud the colo is competing quite well so what colo is going to give you you don't have to worry about buying the land you don't have to worry about the power supply chilling plant location because the location selection is also a big big uh is a big task because you can't just host your data center in the middle of the Sahara Desert, right? Because that's not going to happen. You need a cool place. You need a place that is not, uh, uh, there are not a lot of natural calamities. Uh, there are not a lot of uh, different disasters are happening. So that, that selection is also a problem. You know, it's a big task. So that's something, you know, will be taken care of by the vendor. So, you know, so, so here, uh, this part will be taken care of by the vendor. The rack, you can, uh, sometimes the rack is also provided. So they'll, they'll give you a cage. And within that cage, uh, within that cage, you can actually bring your rack. You can bring your all network appliances. You can bring your servers and, uh, you know, uh, you can run it. And you don't need to worry about the power, the chilling, the physical security, et cetera, because that will be taken care of by the vendor here. So that is your colo. Uh, co-location co facilities or color data centers. Now there is a, another popular uh, cloud. So you know, type. Now we, st we enter uh, in the cloud, right? So let me just put it here. So this is the first type of the cloud, and uh, probably you know, I don't know if you have seen it or not, but this is bare metal as a service right which often also sometimes abbreviated as bmas so you have a next data center uh next data okay uh, this is the first cloud service now now vmware is doing it google is doing it and all other companies are also doing it uh, I'll tell you why, uh, what is the reason here. So you can actually bring your own hypervisor. So, so far here, uh, you know, the, the different services, um, you know, because you've all, uh, there are different services which will give you the hypervisor as well. Like if you ever created an EC2 instance or computer engine, you just have to select the operating system, right? Which is here. You don't have to worry about all these things because it's already been taken care of by the cloud companies, right? So you don't, you don't bother yourself uh, about all this. But now, 
you know, you are a company and you already bought a ESXi license, right? You already have some on-prem license for the hypervisor. And, you know, because there was a vendor locked in, you bought it for some certain years and you still paying for that license. And at the same time, cloud company is also going to charge you for the license, right? So you are thinking, okay, this is a waste for me. And the concern has been raised and the solution is here, right? So now you can bring your on-prem hypervisor license as well. And you can just put it onto the cloud and you can use it, right? So that's how you save the licensing cost for the hypervisor. And that service is called bare metal as a service. BMS, uh, which is known on the GCP, on Google as a BMS. And so normally this is called um, bare metal as a service. So the next cloud, let me just unselect all this because as we move to, uh, you know, because you'll see that there, you know, as we move uh, further, down the line in the cloud services, we'll see that our responsibilities are getting reduced. Now here, you have to worry about the hypervisor. Anything happens to here because you are bringing your own uh, hypervisor, so you're gonna have to worry about it. So you have the responsibility, right? You're saving money, but now you need a responsibility because, and you would do that at the time because on, on the on-prem, you already have your, uh, you already have your, uh, engineers that are taking care of uh, managing the hypervisor for you so those so same engineers they can do it here as well and that's why you decide that okay i'm gonna go with this right so that make that way that that way it makes sense uh for doing it i mean for companies who already have specialized people who can manage their services the next we have is which is infrastructure as a service and this is where the cloud actually, uh, you know, cloud caught the fire and everybody started using the cloud infrastructure as a service. And this is quite popular. And even though, you know, I mean, we are in the today's age where they're not, you know, they're hardly used, they're not as much use cases as it used to be for the infrastructure as a services because we are moving more cloud native and trying to modernize our hosting um, platforms and hosting applications the way that we do it. So, um, but, you know, it might not be as much used as it was in the past, but, you know, this is the main core of the cloud, uh, you know, when the cloud started, because you already had the SaaS going from the Salesforce, but nobody was talking about the cloud. You know, the, the cloud didn't actually catch the fire at the time. When Amazon proposed the idea of selling infrastructure as a service, this is where everybody started raising their eyebrows and everybody started questioning as well that this probably not going to work the idea, but Amazon did it and kudos to them. You know, they deserve a lot of props. So you got to give them. So, and they are the leader as well because they started, uh, you know, uh, they started first and they've captured the market as well. So you have that. And uh, it, so here you can bring your own operating system. If you have on-prem operating system license, you can migrate your license on the cloud as well. So you need a people who can manage your operating system, runtime, scaling, application, and all these sort of things, right? And uh, cloud is going to take care of the hypervisor thing for you. And, uh, you know, the rack server and all those, all those things that, that goes with it. Okay, so we also have a one more service. Didn't mean to do that. Okay. Now this is container as a service. CAS, I'm just gonna say CAS now. Container as a service here, you can go with the operating system, which, which is container optimized, right? There are core OS and container optimized OS by the Google. So you can go for these kind of operating system, which are container optimized, you know, the core OS, like, you know, like that. And you also have a different runtimes as well. So these are the operating system where you already have the runtime. You don't need to install the runtime for the container workloads, right? Because they, they are optimized. They already have it. Whether it can be container D, whether it can be the Docker engine, you already have it. So when you, when you go for services like that, you already have, you know, uh, the runtime for running your containers there. So they, 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 they're created with this, you know, the new operating system that has emerged, which is a core, uh, which is, you know, part of the open source, for, core OS was open source, then it was acquired by Red Hat, I think. And then there are similar operating systems out there in the market. 
which are container optimized and you have you know different services provided by the cloud like a cloud run where you can run your um, containers directly you can build the container and you run it you don't want to go to kubernetes which is you know um you know which you don't want to use the kubernetes right because you don't you don't kill a fly with a cannon right so if you have a one sort of thing and you want to do it you can actually use some a container as a service service on the cloud this that is available and that should that should be able to do the job that you're trying to do so that's what we have and then we have a next service we'll talk about all the services by all the cloud providers right from the azure from the google from the aws as well when the time is when we are talking about that topic right now we are talking we are taking a very generic view so i'm not going to just name different services uh right because those services are designed in a different way and sometimes the services are uh it is merged with others other type of service or sometimes is uh, isolated independent service so we'll talk those about we'll talk about all of those later the next thing we have pass probably this is what you already knew the IAS, the PaaS, and the SaaS, right? They are very famous and, you know, but I'm actually showing you cloud has evolved and there are more than just as PaaS and SaaS, right? So you have the platform as a service where the runtime will be taken care for you. So you don't need to worry about the runtime. You only have to worry about the scaling and bringing your application and whatever form of data that you are getting as well. So that's that's what you're going to have to do uh, for the platform as a service, right? So, I mean, you see the services now, all, you know, slowly, slowly, the responsibilities are being taken off. But when your responsibility is taken off, at the same time, you're going to have to pay extra for it. But, you know, you can measure the services. You can always calculate uh, what you want to spend. So it's easier to do it uh, either way. So as a cloud admin, as a cloud architect, or somebody who's working on the cloud, you should be able to make these judgment calls, uh, selection of the services, which one is right, and which one you want to go with. Okay. So the next one we have is function as a service, which is called FAS. We just put that. And these are the functions you have. And in the functions, the auto scaling uh, is also you know, it's been taken care of. Now you don't have to worry about scaling up your application as your work, uh, as your load increases, you can simply do that. Now the pass and fast function as a service and a platform as a service, they might, you know, sound like very similar, but you know, you don't have the scaling uh, which you have here. Plus in the platform are the managed services, the other database services, warehouse services can also qualify there. And in the function as a service, where you can just bring the subset of your program because you know if you have ever written a program, you would know that the best practice uh, to make your code dry, do not repeat your code. You know to make to follow the dry principle, you're gonna have to make sure you don't repeat by creating multiple functions. Right? You can create functions. We see we've seen in the Terraform that we create modules. Modules gonna just make your code more reusable, and that's the principle of the dry. Right? So you create your you know, you create small, small functions. It's easy to manage. You decouple them from the actual code and uh, you can, you know, it's much better approach. You know, the microservice, why it's so uh, famous. So you have the function as a service and this function as a service, uh, again, there are different uh, services are there uh, on the different clouds. So we'll not talk about those. We'll just uh, go ahead from the generic view uh, or general understanding. The last but not the least we have okay now we have sas like probably this is also something you already knew so let me just color it where you just bring you know i mean all you do is just put the data right so is there any color that is left oh, probably this one so sas is like your you know the github that you use you don't you don't know what the GitHub backend server is. You don't know where the GitHub data center is. I mean, you, probably you can find out, but you really don't need to know that. You don't know what uh, language it is written. Again, you can look into the documentation and they'll tell you what you know the, it's written in. So the operating system that is running on, the runtime is using behind it, the application code logic, you really, uh, I mean, 
you know, these are the things which you don't need to worry about, right? You only bring the data and you use the service. So that's uh, that's what the SaaS uh, is, right? So so that, that is the software as a service. Now, so these are the different, uh, you know, different, uh, you know, services in the cloud. And you probably just knew two or three, but now you can see I've given you a whole lot of that. And that's what I try to do bring something different than you already probably know or you pro already have, uh, you know, had some awareness in the past. So SaaS, sometimes you can also call it uh, X has, where, where X is a placeholder and where any application that you are selling as a cloud service to your uh, customer, you can just call that. Like if, you, if the Kafka is a messaging service and if you are selling that Kafka, cluster as a service, then you can just simply call it a CAS, right? Kafka as a service. If your database, you are selling that, you can call DBAS database as a service. And similarly, like any service that you are specialized in, you can sell it to your customer by just automating everything. Your customer doesn't have, doesn't need to worry about anything. You just punch in the data, that's it. You don't need to worry about the application code, the backend patching, the scaling, the runtime, the operating system selection, the patching on the kernel and all those things or changing hypervisor or even dealing with the physical security. You take care of everything for them, right? So that's that's actually goes into the SaaS. So uh, 